Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Rosie and I am a master's student studying forensic archaeology and anthropology at Cranfield University. <laughs> these sit down videos for such a long time so first of all welcome to this weird setup even though it's not new it feels quite strange to be sat talking directly to the camera again I've got a few of these sit down videos planned throughout August because they're easier to bulk film and also easier to edit and basically I I just have a whole lot of work my dissertation's due next month I'm a bit bogged down with work, which is why also I've not been uploading consistently, but I have really planned in my YouTube uploads this month at least to try and get you at least one a week, preferably two, and teach you as many things as I can teach you, share with you what I can and you know, just, just keep in touch basically. So on that note, if you do have anything that you'd like to learn about archaeology, about forensics, if there's a fun YouTube challenge that you want me to try, if there's a particular style of video that you want to see more of, let me know in the comments and I can add them into my plan throughout August and September and you know definitely get you what you want to see. So without further ado, let's get on with the video. Today's video is all about doing a masters. Should you do a masters? I'm gonna be splitting this video into five parts and that is the who, what, where, why and when. Yes, it probably feels like we're going back to school but that was the easiest and most logical way for my brain to split it up. <laughs> and hopefully it'll help you remember and recall what I'm saying. Firstly, the who. Who are you doing this for? Is it for you? Is it for your parents? Is it to keep up appearances? If you're doing a masters, it should be for yourself and for yourself only. Do you actually want to do it? Or are you just doing it because you think it's expected of you? Because someone else has suggested that it's a good idea? This is a commitment. You know, it's at least one year, it might be two years. And it's a lot of money. There is absolutely no point going through the stress, the, the debt, essentially, <laughs> and the, the tiredness that comes with the masters if it's not something that you actually want to do. You have got to be into it, you've got to enjoy what you've decided to choose, you've, you've got to want to be there, otherwise it is not going to be a good experience for you. Essentially just take some time to sit down and think about what you really want. Is it that you want to learn more? Is it that you want to specialise more? Is it that you just want to keep at university, all of these reasons are fine, as long as they are all for yourself. Which leads us into the what. What subject is it are you going to be doing? Does this subject actually need, you know, a specialist extra year to home in on an area? Do you even need a master's to pursue this subject at all? For me, thinking about the what just equates to, is a master's the right choice for what I want to do? Could you potentially do an apprenticeship or go straight into work and receive the exact same skills as you would in a master's? Or maybe, like I said before, it's the research that you really like. Think about which aspects it is that you actually want to do, what subject you really enjoy, what subject you want to specialise in, and where you actually learn best, what style you learn best in. This is the bit that will actually take a bit of research. You know, you might not know that there's avenues you can go down that aren't a master's in order to get the same specialist skills. In archaeology, for example, there are new trainee schemes knocking about that don't require you to have a master's. Now, it's all well and good deciding that you want to do a master's, but where are you going to do it? Of course, it's all of the same aspects of choosing a university course that you likely went through at undergraduate, but there's also, I think, an added pressure of where is expected of you to continue your education. For example, something that comes hand in hand with you know hustle culture and capitalism in general is the fact that you need to keep progressing up and up with everything that you do, and that is just not the case. Nor does this progression, if that is what you want to do, look the same for every subject, for every person. From personal experience, I went to Oxford and I spent a lot of time thinking about where I should go for a master's that wouldn't look bad. <laughs> Which was, it was ridiculous and it was based on my insecurities about I need to keep raising my own bar, you know, what are these expectations of me? Especially because I'm on the internet, where should I go that people will think, ah, oh, 
yeah, that's a great step up from where she's done her undergraduate degree. And, and it does start to get at you. So if there's any point where you're thinking, okay, where can I go to university that won't lower the bar? Newsflash, no one's gonna lower any bar. Everyone's different, everyone learns different, and a master's is a time to find somewhere that really suits your style of learning, the specific subject that you want, any research that you actually want to go into. This is to home in on a specific area of your subject and the place that might be the best for that and the best for you and the university that might be consequently best for your specialism, for your interests, for your learning style is by no means going to be the same university that is deemed best in the league tables. Take Cranfield for example. I have got a lot of people ask me, oh why, why are you taking a step down after Oxford? Why aren't you going somewhere like UCL, Oxford again, Cambridge to continue excelling after your undergraduate degree? Why pick a random university in the middle of nowhere that no one has ever heard of when you built all of this up? Why take that step down? For me it is not a step down and it's not a step down in general at all. Cranfield was what I deemed to be the best place for my working style, the best place for my subject. It was the best place in terms of research opportunities for my needs. If you're going to university just to keep up appearances or just to keep raising that bar that you have made for yourself or that you perceive other people to have made for you, then it is a master's really what you want to do? And that takes you back to the who point. Finding a master's university that is right for you is going to take a lot of searching. You need to look at, you know, the course content list. Is it actually things that are new to you or are you just going to pay for stuff you've already learned? Has it got tutors that have similar research interests to you that you could maybe build as a contact for the future if research is something that you want to do? Is it in a place in the country or in a country that you genuinely want to live in? Of course this I don't think is as important as you know the, the course content and everything in terms of your paying for this degree and especially with corona still lingering you might end up doing it at home but it's still something to think about. Something else to think about is the when. When are you gonna do this masters? Do you need to do it now? Are you just doing it now because you're panicking? No, that isn't true. Is it a panic masters? Okay, yeah, that is true. A panic masters is okay, but you don't want to spend money on something that if you actually waited until you were ready, until you really knew what you wanted, you'd have chosen something completely different. If you're in the position, if you have that privilege where you, you can just do a panic masters, do it. I would have. <laughs> Absolutely do it. If you can then come back and do another masters when you're ready, again, do it. But just take the time to think about when you actually want to do these things. You know, do you need to do them now? Do you need to take a year out to work? Would it be more beneficial to you if you did some work in industry first? if you took the time out to look at scholarships, if you worked for a year to fund your degree, if, I think most importantly, you are mentally ready to do a master's. They're hard work and so is undergraduate. If you need a break, take a break. There's no shame in it. I took a break. Lots of people take breaks. <laughs> in fact, a lot of people that I know have taken a break. They haven't come straight through. Doing a master's when it's the right time Though that might be hard to say, now is the right time, when, you know, when is the right time? But if there is any part of you that thinks, actually, I don't, I don't really want to do it now, I'd rather wait, then wait. In sum, why? Why do you want to do it? Go over all of the points that I've just said and think about all your reasons for and against doing different things, going to different places, you know, different subjects that you like, different specialisms that you like, and think about why it is that you want to do those things. And if at the end of all of this, you still want to do a master's, then I think a master's is definitely for you. If you're questioning, take some time out to think about it. I'm gonna leave some useful links in the description about going into master's study, uh, about funding, fees, applications, writing a personal statement, all the things that I've collated off the internet, whether I use them myself or have just watched them and thought they were useful. And my next video, next week, same day, same time, will be on how to choose a master's. Some key tips and things to think about when you're going through that process. Thank you for watching this video. I do hope that it was helpful in at least one way, maybe. If I've helped one of you, then that's fine. 
I'd really appreciate it if you did give me a thumbs up if you are interested in more content like this about doing a masters or even about archaeology and once again let me know in the comments if there's anything specific that you want me to answer I can't speak <laughs> subscribe if you don't already and I'll see you in my next video what? my next video goodbye <laughs>